Namaskar my dear students. Today in the dental material section, we will be discussing the rigid or the inelastic impression materials. In this, we will be discussing about impression compound and the zinc oxide eugenol impression paste in detail. You know, these materials are often asked in the theory exam as short notes or a part of the long note. These are the materials you are asked to manipulate during the dental materials practical exam. And both of these materials are the most common materials used for making the impression for edentulous patient. So let's begin. First of all, what is an impression? We all know that a dental impression is the negative replica of the hard and the soft oral tissues. We make the impression and then we pour it with a gypsum product and then we get the positive replica that is the cast, dye or the model. Now let us quickly revise the classification of impression material. A separate video for the classification of impression material is already uploaded. You can just go through that. Uh, here just quickly we will revise. Impression material based on elasticity can be the non-elastic uh, or the rigid impression materials. They are mainly used for the edentulous patient where there are no undercuts. Then second is the elastic materials. Uh, they are used for the dentate and the edentulous patient with undercuts. The non-elastic materials are impression plaster, impression compound, impression waxes and the zinc oxide eugenol impression paste. The elastic materials can be further classified as aqueous hydrocolloids and the non-aqueous elastomers. Aqueous hydrocolloids can be agar which is a reversible hydrocolloid, alginate irreversible hydrocolloid. In the non-aqueous elastomers, they are basically polysulfides, silicones and the polyether. The silicones are condensation silicon and the addition silicon. You know a detailed video for the aqueous hydrocolloids and the non-aqueous elastomers is already present in the playlist. playlist. You can just go through that. In this video, we will be discussing about the most common non-elastic or the rigid impression materials used. That is the impression compound and the zinc oxide eugenol impression paste. So let us discuss them one by one. First, we will be discussing about the uh, impression compound in detail. Impression compound, it is also called as the modeling plastic. It is a thermoplastic material. By a thermoplastic, you mean that it is moldable at a certain high temperature and then it solidifies upon cooling. Okay, so that is why it is reversible. Okay, then it is applied in the form of cakes and the sticks. Sticks can be green, gray or red depending on the fusion temperature. They do not readily register the fine surface details because they are highly viscous in nature. Okay, though they are moldable, but their flow is very less. Now we come to the composition of the impression compound. In this, first we have the resin, 30 parts, then copal resin, 30 parts, carnauba wax, 10 parts, stearic acid, 5 parts, talc, 75 parts, and the coloring agent in the appropriate amount. In this, if we talk about this resin, copal resin, carnauba wax, all these three uh, ingredients, they give the thermoplastic properties to the impression compound. Then comes the stearic acid along with shellac or gutta percha. They are the plasticizers. They improve the plasticity and workability of the material. Then talc. Talc is the main filler which is used. Okay. Now this will reduce the plasticity and it will increase the strength of the matrix material. Okay. Then comes the coloring agent. The most common coloring agent rogue R-O-U-G-E which is used, which gives the typical red color to the impression compound. Now we come to the classification of impression compound. There are two types of impression compound. Type 1 is the impression compound used for making impression. It is a low fusing compound. And the type 2 is the tray compound. It is used to prepare trays for making the impression. The type 2 uh, tray compound, it is stiffer and it has less flow as compared to the regular type 1 impression compound. Students often get confused 
uh, in this. So you can just remember T for two, T for three. Now let us discuss its uses or the application of impression compound in dentistry. The first and the very common use is that it is used to make the primary impression for the edentulous patient that is the mouth without the teeth. It can only be used when there are no undercuts. Okay, second is for doing the border molding. Again, we do the border molding of the custom tray for a complete denture patient. Third, for making tube impression. What is a tube impre impression? It is a single tooth impression which is used in conservative dentistry. Okay, it is used to make a single tooth dye. Now, for all these three uses, type 1 impression compound is used. The next use is for construction of trays for the denture patient fabricating the custom tray okay next is to check the undercut in the inlay preparation okay and for these two type 2 that is the tray compound is used as we discussed that impression compound is a thermoplastic material so two temperatures which are very important for its manipulation are the glass transition temperature and the fusion temperature First is the glass transition temperature. You know when the impression compound it is heated in a hot water bath, the material when it starts to soften, that is called as the glass transition temperature. The softening has just started, but it is still not that plastic that we can make the impression. The glass transition temperature is approximately 39 degrees Celsius. Now when the temperature increases further, what happens the material loses its hardness or the brittleness okay or it forms a rigid mass upon cooling that is called as the fusion temperature okay now above this temperature the material is plastic and we can make the impression so all the impressions are made above this temperature the fusion temperature of impression compound is approximately 43.5 degrees celsius now these are one of the multiple choice questions and viva questions which are asked. Now what is its significance? Significance of the fusion temperature and the glass transition temperature. You know all the impressions with the compound should be made above the fusion temperature when the material is plastic and, we, and it is moldable. And all the impressions should be removed after it cools down below to its glass transition temperature. This is very important. The next property is thermal conductivity. You know the thermal conductivity of impression compound is very low. That is they are poor conductors of heat. Now what happened that during softening of the material, the outside part, it always softens first and the inside last. So to ensure that uniform softening has taken place, then only we can make a good impression. So for that, we can do the following things. First is we can break it into pieces and then put it in the water bath. Second, it can be kept immersed in the hot water for sufficient period of time so that the whole material is softened. Third, kneading. Kneading is very, very essential. It ensures that uniform softening has taken place. Similarly, uh, it, the low thermal conductivity, it affects the cooling rate also. So for removal, we have to wait until the whole of the impression, it cools thoroughly. Otherwise, what will happen? It will lead to distortion. The next is the coefficient of thermal expansion. The coefficient of thermal expansion of impression compound is comparatively high. Why? Because of the presence of resins and the waxes. The second is that the linear contraction which is taking place. We are making the impression in the mouth and then we are coming to the room, room temperature. So the contraction is around 0.3%. So these errors from the thermal distortion which are taking place, they can be reduced by two methods. The first method is that we obtain a normal impression, then we pass that impression over a flame until the, the surface is softened. And then we obtain a second impression. Now what happens during the second impression, the shrinkage will be low because only the surface layer was softened. 
Now, similarly, the second way is that we, we can reduce this thermal contraction by spraying cold water on the metal tray just before it is inserted in the mouth. Thus, the material which is adjacent to the tray, it will be hardened while the surface layer which will be near to the tissue will remain soft. Now let us talk about the flow. Flow of any impression material is very important so that we can obtain the details of the tissue contour. The permissible flow values for the dental compounds according to the ADA specification number 3 is for the type 1 impression compound at 37 degrees Celsius, the flow should be less than 6%. At 45 degrees Celsius, when it is plastic, the flow should be more than 85%. For the type 2 tray compound at 37 degrees Celsius, the flow is less than 2%. It is 70 to 85% at 45 degrees Celsius. You know, because of the less flow value of the impression compound, the detailed reproduction is comparatively less. And due to its high viscosity, pressure has to be applied during the uh, impression and it becomes a mucocompressive material. Now let us come to the manipulation of the impression compound as we discussed that impression compound is available in two forms the stick scones form or the cake form. The stick compound it is softened over the flame directly and it is mainly used for doing the border molding while the cakes they are used to make the primary impressions. Okay now coming to the uh, impression compound cake form the material uh, that is required for making the upper impression is three-fourth of the compound cake and half cake is needed for the lower impression. Then impression compound cake it is broken into pieces. It is heated and tempered in the water bath at 60 to 70 degrees Celsius. Okay then or it can be used in the warm water also which can be taken in a bath. After 5 minutes, the material is removed from the bath and it is kneaded nicely. Okay, then the material is loaded onto the tray and is inserted into the patient's mouth. Impression is removed after it has completely cooled and hardened. Okay, then rinse the impression. The impression is disinfected with 2% glutaral dehyde. Now obtaining the cast impression should be poured immediately. You know uh, since the release of strains is unavoidable. So the safest way to prevent distortion is pour it immediately. Second for retrieval. Cast is retrieved by immersing in the warm water. Okay the impression compound will soften and we can easily separate the cast from it. Now let us know the advantages and disadvantages of impression compound. The advantages are first it can be reused for the same patient. Okay because it is a thermoplastic material it is moldable it can be reused. Second it can be corrected if there is any deficient area we can correct the same impression no need to go for the new impression. Third is it has sufficient body to support if the flanges of the tray are short, still we will be able to take a good impression. Disadvantages. First, it records less detail because of its high viscosity and less flow. Second, compression of the soft tissue. Again, because of the high viscosity, it compresses the soft tissue. So it is a mucocompressive material. Third, distortion. To prevent distortion, we can pour it immediately. Last is difficult to remove in the undercut areas because of its inelastic or rigid properties. It is difficult to remove in the undercut areas. The next material that we will be discussing is the impression paste, zinc oxide eugenol impression paste. Zinc oxide eugenol impression paste. It is a rigid irreversible impression material it sets by a chemical change so it is irreversible it has high degree of accuracy and good reproduction of surface detail because it has very good flow the viscosity is less and it is commonly used to make the final impression that is the wash impression for the complete denture 
Impression paste is available commonly in the two paste system. First is the base paste which contains zinc oxide. It is white in color. And second is the catalyst paste. It mainly contains eugenol which is red in color. Now we come to the composition of the zinc oxide eugenol impression paste. First is the tube 1 which contains the base paste. It mainly contains zinc oxide. It is 7% the main constituent of the base paste, the reactor. Then fixed uh, vegetable or the mineral oil. It acts as a pl plasticizer. It is present in 13%. It helps to mask the action of eugenol as an irritant. Okay, then comes the second tube which contains the accelerator. The main accelerator is oil of clove or eugenol. Okay, sometimes oil of clove is used in preference to the eugenol because it has less burning sensation. Then gum or the polymerized rosin, 50%. It speeds up the reaction and improves the homogeneity. Filler, mainly silica or talc, 20%. Then lenolin, 3%. Resinous balsam, it improves the flow and the mixing properties. It is present in 10%. Accelerator solution, okay, mainly calcium chloride is used. Other accelerators like zinc acetate, primary alcohols or glacial acetic acid can also be used and the coloring agents. Now because the eugenol, it causes the burning sensation. So non-eugenol type impression pastes have come which mainly contain carboxylic acid or chlorothymol. You know in all cases the two toothpastes they will come in the contrasting color and they are mixed in the ratio of 1 is to 1. Next we come to the setting reaction of the zinc oxide eugenol impression paste. In this it is the typical acid base reaction to form a chelate. When the two pastes are mixed then what happens first the zinc oxide it reacts with water to form zinc hydroxide this is the base the eugenol it acts as a weak acid so it reacts with the base to form a chelate this is the chelate called as the zinc eugenolate okay if we go to the microstructure the matrix is formed by the zinc eugenolate uh, and the core contains the zinc oxide particles Okay, so the reaction is acid base reaction called as chelation and the product which is formed is the zinc eugenolate or the chelate. Setting time, very very important factor. It is very commonly asked in the viva what is the setting time and then what are the factors which control it. So let us discuss first. First, what is the initial setting time? You know, initial setting time is the period from the beginning of the mixing until the material, it ceases to pull away. So all the impressions should be seated in the mouth before the initial set. Second is the final setting time. It occurs when a needle, it fails to penetrate more than 0.2 millimeter under a load of 50 grams. So always the impression will be removed after the final setting time. Based on this, there are two types of materials, type 1 with the initial setting time of 3 to 6 minutes and final setting time 10 minutes. Type 2 with the initial setting time of 3 to 6 minutes and final setting time of 15 minutes. Now let us know the factors which control the setting time. First is the particle size. If the particle size is small, what will happen? If it, it will be acid coated and the setting time will be less. It will set quickly. Second is the length of the paste, uh, changing the length, like uh, adding more catalyst or less catalyst, but it is not at all recommended. Third is the adding accelerator. Okay, it can be zinc acetate or a drop of water. What happens? How it increases the setting reaction? It actually increases the speed of formation of zinc hydroxide. So that is why it speeds up the reaction and the setting time is decreased. Then high temperature and humidity, it also decreases the setting time. Longer mixing time, okay, longer mixing time also fastens the reaction and the setting time is decreased. In hot and humid areas, we want to increase the setting time. How we can do that? Very frequent uh, viva question which is asked. First, we can cool the glass slab and the spatula. 
second we can add retarders like vaseline oil or back fill now we come to the properties of the zinc oxide eugenol impression paste the first is the consistency and flow the flow of impression material is very important so that it, it can record the fine details of the tissues impression paste clinically has a very good flow second is the detail reproduction because of the good flow it registers surface details quite accurately third is rigidity and strength you know the material should resist the fracture during removal and impression paste has a compressive strength of around 7 megapascals 2 hours after mixing next is the dimensional stability dimensional stability of impression paste is quite satisfactory a negligible negligible shrinkage of less than 0.1% is seen last is the biological con consideration it is of much concern as the impression paste causes burning sensation due to the eugenol which is present it can cause tissue irritation so as we discussed in the composition that non eugenol pastes can be substituted manipulation of the impression paste for this two ropes of the equal length and the width are taken the base and the catalyst they can be taken on the glass slab or the oil impervious paper which is uh, available with the impression paste itself then third uh, a flexible stainless steel spatula is used to mix the ropes the two ropes these are combined with the first sweep of the spatula followed by the long circular spatulation you know it creates a homogeneous mix okay a, a one color will be obtained when it is mixed nicely the mixing time is around 1 minute now to make the impression a custom tray is required custom or a special tray is required after doing the border molding the custom tray is prepared okay then it is loaded with the material now Uh, then the impression tray is seated into the patient's mouth and to check whether the material has set or not the material which is present on the glass slab can be used we can just penetrate a sharp instrument into it and to see whether it has set after it has set we will remove the impression we will rinse it and then disinfect in the solution of 2% glutaryl dehyde the impression should be poured immediately or within 1 hour then the cast is retrieved from the impression by immersing in the hot water now we come to the advantages of the impression paste first and very important is accurate surface details that is why it is used as a final impression material because it records good details because of its good flow second it is dimensionally stable as we discussed with a negligible shrinkage third the minor defects they can be corrected locally without discarding the whole impression then it adheres well to the custom tray now coming to the disadvantages first it requires a special or a custom tray second it is sticky in nature and it adheres to the tissues and sometimes it is messy also it sticks to the face also so either you can apply vaseline before making the impression then burning sensation due to eugenol which is present it causes tissue irritation it cannot be used for the undercut areas because of its rigid or the inelastic nature so that's all for this topic please like and share the video with your friends and your juniors subscribe the channel for more learning and listening to such topics you can give your topics in the comment section i will try to cover them in the next videos wish you success today and always